Hey, what is up guys? So we're going to be going over the best cards in the new Duelist Pack Battle City. I know we just got the Star Pack V, but there's a new Battle City Pack, and I think this one is much, much better than the previous one. Anyways, I went ahead and did all the homework for you guys, but if you want to check out the full list, I'll put a link down below in that description box. But like I said, I did the work for you guys. So anyways, these are the best cards out of the set. So uh, the first one over here is an ultra rare. It's called Anti-Magic Arrows. And it's a quick play spell card that is basically spell speed super poly. So it's at the start of battle phase for the rest of the, the turn after this card resolves. Spell and trap cards and their effects cannot be activated. Cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this card's activation. I think... That last sentence right there just makes the card. Um, I feel like we already got Denko Seca, so a lot of those OTK decks probably won't even bother using it. But nonetheless, it's still a pretty decent card in the set. Next up, uh, pretty good fan service over here in this entire set. It's got blue eyes, it's got the red eyes, it's got the uh, Dark Magician Girl. But the Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode, it's actually a pretty cool card. It actually is not completely useless. If you guys want to check out how it works in a real duel, I'll put a link down below in the description box. So you guys can go ahead and watch how it performs. But... Um, I think it's a pretty decent card. It lets you uh, tribute it uh, by tributing your opponent's monsters, and then during uh, the end phase of the next turn, you get a Wing Dragon Raw, and its attack and defense become 4,000, so that's pretty nasty. Uh, if your opponent maybe tries to OTK you, Battle Fader, and bam, they lose all of their strong monsters, and on top of that, you get a 4,000 meter. That's pretty cool. Now, I just want to say it'd be funny to see this card mirror match because, uh, you know, you could actually tribute the card to special summon a Wing Dragon or Raw, but if your opponent uh, happens to also have it in their deck, they can definitely make use of it. But nonetheless, I think it's more of a fan service card. Uh, next up, we got Dr Dra Gido or Ghetto. I think he's one of the potentially like best cards out of this set, simply because it could be possibly uh, viable in some of the meta, especially in like some random mirror matches. So, anyways, it's a 1700 attack dark that is level 4 and it says during either player's battle step you can special summon this card from your hand if you do gain a thousand life points and then it has another effect you can only use this effect of Dragetto once per turn during either player's turn you can tribute this card and then target one face up a face up monster you control it gains a thousand attack until the end of this turn so that basically allows you to keep your monsters alive plus the dark so like uh, a little bit of utility there plus he has decent attack uh, but the most important thing is you're able to keep your monsters alive unless they want to crash into you. So uh, certain uh, decks that need multiple turns to kind of get themselves established. Um, certain decks like Auro Majors can definitely make good use of this card because you're also gaining life points. And then on top of that, they can't attack over your monster uh, unless they just want to die. Well, okay, if they have something that has like 4,000 attack, yeah, they're probably going to get over you. But... No less, I think it's a really good card. It's just like an honest that any deck can use. You not only are able to gain an attack boost, but uh, you also gain light points. Like I said, it's the most useful thing in Auro Mages, uh, to my knowledge. But a lot of decks definitely can make use of this card. Uh, next up, Crush Card Virus. Although this card is a common, I still think it is kind of worthy of mentioning. But uh, yeah, it's still just a good card in general. I don't think it's going to be an expensive card, but it's still a great card. So I'd consider it one of the best cards in the uh, set. Um, there's also Toon Table of Contents. If you guys didn't know, Toons are getting more support. And some of the support is actually pretty decent, but the whole deck revolves around Toon World, or essentially the Toon Kingdom. And if that card gets destroyed, you don't draw that card, you can't play. Um, now this card was actually kind of expensive. Uh, Toon Table of Contents, guys, if you didn't know, it was like 5 bucks, and it's like... Where are those Toon players, right? But uh, I think it's just more of a card that some people you've been using for FTKs with like Toon Table Contents, Royal Magical Library, and all that stuff. But it was like a pretty expensive card, so great to see a reprint. And plus, uh, since it was kind of an older card, um, it's kind of nice just to get a reprint of it, just because, you know, having the card in good condition is definitely nice. I know it did get a reprint, but still, it's nice to have um, this card, because basically everyone that plays it plays it at three. Uh, another decent reprint is the Legendary Fisherman, just because... Um, they are getting more, well, it's one card support technically right now. In the future, this all could change, but uh, Legendary Fisherman is a pretty old school card and had this uh, combination with Yumi, and it was like, oh my gosh, this is like, it was old school, like, oh my gosh combos, but it's probably not relevant anymore. But who knows, maybe the new sport will actually be kind of good. And then lastly, uh, this is an a ultra rare. Uh, this card, I believe, is common anyways, but for the most part, the most expensive cards are pretty much going to be like the... Um, I think maybe this would be an expensive card. It all depends on short prints, too. We don't have any um, 
knowledge on uh, if there's anything short printed or not. But I think uh, during Guido or Ghetto over here, he's probably one of the most expensive cards other than maybe Wing Dragon or Raw. But it's, it, like I said, this set is much better than the Arc V set that just came out. But Multiple Destruction, ultra rare card. It's a uh, tra normal trap card that says, if both players have three or more cards in their hand, each player places their entire hand on the bottom of the deck in any order. Also, you lose life points equal to the total number of cards returned to the deck by this effect times 300, minimum one. Then each player draws five cards. You can only activate one of them per turn. Now this card opens up a lot of cheese, uh, as in there are combos with this card where you can basically break the game. Uh, one combo, if you guys want to check out the video, I'll also link it down below in the description box. Um, I titled what the title of the video. New cheese, first turn your opponent has no cards, that's what it's titled. But uh, basically what happens is, uh, use this card in combination with the protector of the sanctuary and it makes it so your opponent can't draw cards except during draw phases. Now, some people were saying that you need to flip this card, but it works on Dev Pro without flipping it, so I don't know, maybe uh, you guys are going to have to ask some judges because uh, sometimes judges are ruling certain things with like draw and lock bird uh, in combination with um, this card maybe could also work, not, not protector, but the, uh, well, there is another combo with draw and lock bird, but uh, that's a video for another day, but uh, yeah with multiple destruction uh, You can make it so your opponent starts out with zero cards and you still get to draw five cards. It's pretty stupid and OP I understand um, But uh, maybe you this card can be like the new sixth sense Maybe someone will figure out some other comments with this because it's potentially game-breaking plus Technically you can go kind of plus with the card because let's say you go first You know you start with five cards, you, you know summon a monster you set this card they go you go ahead and activate this um, he's gonna go, your opponent's gonna go ahead and shuffle everything back into their, uh, well, you put them back at the, uh, bottom of the deck in any order, and then they, he draws five cards, and if he's going second, that means, uh, instead of starting out with six cards, he starts out with five, and obviously, uh, if you happen to have three cards and you're going to be able to draw five cards, that's technically plus, so, in the right scenarios, if you really want to sack your opponent, yeah, this card opens up a lot of potential uh, to doing so. And I feel like this is one of those cards where maybe once someone figures out some other combo, yeah, it's going to be very, very cheesy indeed. Chester Cheetah confirmed. But yeah, that's it for the uh, Duelist Pack a Battle City that is coming out actually in two, actually one day, because I'm uploading this, because rendering time, right? Uh, they'll probably hit 12 o'clock, but Anyways, yeah, um, this is coming out, I mean, like I said, we felt like we just got one of these, like, little mini packs. Uh, these should be retailing for, like, a dollar to two dollars. They're not, um, as expensive because it's only five cards per pack instead of, well, the other one came out and it had three cards per pack. But nonetheless, I think it's a, a much better set than the Arc V, but I still think that the next set is something that is much more, um, worthy of investing into. But nonetheless, if you're a fan of the TV show and some of the uh, cards like the Red Eyes, the Dark Magician, the Blue Eyes, if you're a fan of those, there's a lot of these in this. This is more of a fan service pack. But I really think this card's actually pretty good. But let me know, guys, what is your favorite card out of the set if you guys want to check out the full spoiler list or I guess if you want to just mention from the ones we mentioned. Personally, for me, I think Juraghetto opened up a lot of uh, combos. Again, it's probably going to be used in our majors more than anything, but it's still pretty cool. Maybe some deck that needs a few turns to kind of let their monster stay on board. I was thinking that for a second. I was like, maybe we could mention Fortune Ladies, but then I realized, yeah, that doesn't really work out too well. That deck takes like 20 turns, and then you actually have attack, and then you get Valor, and then you're like, oh man, why did I play Fortune Ladies? But anyways, rambling off topic. Anyways, Thanks for watching, guys. And like I said, check out the cheese combo. And if you guys want to check out the Wing Dragon of Raw Sphere mode, uh, links down below in the description box so you guys can watch yourself. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Asian Eyes, signing out.